guys, what's going on? Welcome to another Pie Game video tutorial for Bucking the New Boston from youtube.com slash What we're going to do in this video is kind of transition into another topic. So first I covered how we could have like two objects crossing over when they're exactly the same size. So with this game of Snake, we, were, we got lucky with that, so we were able to do that. But in a lot of games, you're not going to get so lucky and there's going to be times where maybe your, like, for example, what we just showed was that if our snake is, for example, smaller, the question is, um, you know, did we cross over at any part of that uh, box? So, like this, you know, did we cross over at any point of that box? Yes, 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 yes. And all that. So that's great. But the other question, though, is, so our snake moves in intervals of 10. And so because of that very structured movement, we know that we'll always be either completely outside of that box or we'll be completely inside that box. We'll never be like the box is here and the square is here and it's hitting like this, like, you know, like part of the uh, snake is hitting the apple. We'll never really have an event like that. So what happens when you do, though? Because, again, in a lot of games, there's no such thing as like the game just knows, hey, there's an impact or because these two objects are overlapping each other. So what we have to do is actually code in handling that, you know, takes the shape and the dimensions of that shape and they, you just decide logically with math, are they crossing? So what, what kind of code do we need when they're crossing over? And that's what we're going to be getting into. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to change with this script. First of all, um, I was noticing that we were having some trouble um, basically on the game over part. So we were having let's see game x equals true um, so yeah right so probably let's see when we're running our snake around let me just show you what I mean so we get off of the screen and I think it was one yeah so we're hitting the X button but nothing's actually happening so the pro but if we hit Q we do get an exit so why is that occurring well, this question is while game over is true, we run this stuff right here. So if I'm not even seeing the quit event, let's because that's down here. So I'm not even seeing that we have a quit event at all um, here. So like what we would do is if event dot type equals pi game dot and then all caps quit. Um, if that's the case, then what do we want to do? Well, we would initially we would say right game exit equals true, but we also need to say um, game over equals false. So we get out of this loop and we get out of this loop. Now the question that I will pose is why can't we do it this way? Why couldn't you ask? Um, Game, why can't you say game over equals false and then game exit equals true? Well, as soon as we set game over equals false, will we actually exit the game? So let's go ahead and save and run that just for our own uh, purposes. So we'll pray in, yay, and then we hit the exit and we were able to exit. So, the, so the, it does not really matter if you put game over over game exit or vice versa. So some people might ask, well, when does the loop actually break? Like, are we going to break mid-if statement or not? And if you wanted to break mid-if statement, you really could. Um, you could throw a break here, right? And that will stop the statement from running. So sometimes you can ask questions and then insert a break um, if it's the case. But anyway, it won't really matter. So just because you ran game, it's going to set game over equals false and game exit equals true. And then, so no matter what, we'll exit the game. So now we're able to, you know, play the game, run off the screen, um, and actually exit in both ways, either hitting Q or hitting um, hitting the X on the window. So now that we've got that, um, the next thing I wouldn't mind uh, changing here now is we've got uh, in the definition of rand apple X and rand apple Y. Um, let's go ahead and stop these from dividing, uh, you know, because we're, we were trying to get them to always be like a multiple of 10. So now I'm going to get rid of that code as well. So it's going to take two parentheses, I believe. Oh, no, just one, I suppose. Let me see. Yeah, that should be fine. So just one and extra parentheses, and then we can comment out. 
Um, you can delete this if you want. I like to leave commented code sometimes there just because it's really easy to comment that section out. And if I ever wanted to go back to it, I can just uncomment it. So sometimes I leave code commented out for a while before I actually fully delete it. So we'll leave that one there. Um, and then we also have another definition of uh, the de uh, redefining Apple, I believe. Right, that's down. Well, is it? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do the same thing here. So parentheses um, comment and then again parentheses comment out and that should be it so now our apple doesn't you know always spawn in the same exact location or like as a multiple of 10 basically and you'll see that we're still able to actually that time I, don't, I think that uh, I don't think we actually were supposed to have gotten the apple at that at that point let me try that again Okay. Anyway, okay. Um, so now that we've made those uh, few changes, what we're going to be doing in the next video is actually making the we're going to make our snake larger, and um, we'll see kind of the problem that arises when we do that because now it's not just as one object within another object. It's we're asking, are we like partially touching those objects? So now you've got quite a few more if statements that you're going to need to add to cover. You know, are we fully within? That's fine. We've got that covered. Are we partial one object in the other one? That's fine. We've got that covered. But we don't know. You know, what if we're just grazing it? And not only are we grazing it on either left or right, but top or bottom as well. So um, that's what we're going to be covering in the next video, uh, or maybe even the one right after that one. Probably the next video though. Um, how to handle that situation. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and stay tuned to the next video.